Hi, welcome back anatomy students. Today we're going to talk about the physiology of the heart. I always tell my students the anatomy pieces are easy peasy, but the physiology is a little bit more difficult. So when you get to the physiology section of any system, you want to buckle down and spend a little extra try time making sense of things. When it comes to controlling your heart rate, there are two different systems that play a role in that control. So one is intrinsic, found within the heart, and that's the nodal system, and one is extrinsic, found outside of the heart, and that's the autonomic nervous system. Today, I'm just gonna talk about the nodal system. Um, you'll remember a little bit about the autonomic nervous system. We talked about parasympathetic and sympathetic, where sympathetic speeds it up, fight or flight, and parasympathetic returns it to normal. That's your rest and digest. So this is the bare bones of the intrinsic nodal system. So you'll see the components here, the sinoatrial node, the atrioventricular node, the bundle of His, the bundle branches left and right, and then the Purkinje fibers. So you should be able to label a diagram of these fibers and then also identify the sequence that an impulse would travel as it moves through this nodal system. So Interesting about heart tissue, we know it's made of muscle, right? So you have your cardiac muscle, which is very unique in that it has both muscular and nervous um, characteristics. So it's similar to both types of tissues um, in that it can send impulses without um, needing any information from the brain. So we don't find this type of tissue anywhere else in our body, um, and it can keeps your heart rate approximately 75 beats per minute, there's going to be a huge range, right? Depending on your age, depending on your physical fitness, um, how much activity you do. So your heart is a muscle, it gets strengthened. Um, so if, if it's strong, it doesn't have to pump as many times to deliver the same amount of blood. So there is a range. Um, the tissues up here in the atrial re region, they contract about um, 0.8 seconds, every 0.8 seconds, which is faster than the ventricles down here. So the ventricle tissue um, has a slower reactivity, so you really need a system that connects the two together, and that's where we have this atrioventricular node that will um, keep the two beating in sync. So the first thing we want to talk about is the sinoatrial node, also called the sinus node or the pacemaker of the heart. So you'll hear lots of different names for it. Here it is in the back wall of the right atrium. So when looking at the heart here, remember it's facing you. So uh, this side is the right and this side is the left. So this is where the initial impulse begins. This is where the initial depolarization or action potential begins. You'll remember those terms from the nervous system. So remember, um, depolarization is a reverse in polarity. Sodium rushes in, causes the inside to become positive, where in comparison to the outside. And so that's your depolarization, and that's an action potential. And it can only move in one direction, right? Because the like those sodium channels are going to close as soon as sodium comes in. And as soon as sodium comes in, it causes the next gated channel to open. Sodium rushes in, it closes, the next channel opens. So that keeps it going in only one direction, which is a good thing. Our heart really wouldn't know when to beat, right? Um, so this SA node is going to begin the beat. The action potential will spread through the right and the left atriums. Then it will reach this atrioventricular node, AV node, because it's found between the atrium and the ventricle, right? So you can see both of those uh, pieces in its name. So where the two of those come together, once the impulse hits the AV node, there'll be a pause while the atria contract. And then that impulse will move into the atrioventricular septum, this dividing line here. So the AV bundle or the bundle of His. So it has a few different names as well. So the action potential will move from the AV node to the AV bundle. So the action potential is moving from node to node and then into the septum. So it goes through the bundle of His to the bundle branches. So you can see there's one on both the right and the left side of the septum. So this is going to take the signal down into the ventricular area. 
<clears throat> the Purkinje fibers down here around the bottom of the heart from the apex and around the margin. Um, the Purkinje fibers are the last in this sequence, so the impulse will travel to the Purkinje fibers, and that will cause a contraction of the ventricles. It'll start at the apex, the point at the bottom. It'll start at the apex, and that will move on up through the ventricles. So after the bundle of his passes the impulse to the bundle branches in the septum, and the bundle branches pass their impulse up through the Purkinje fibers, causing that whole ventricular contraction, then the um, the ventricle will go through a relaxation phase. So this is just reminding you about that um, action potential in case you had forgotten. Here um, we have this negative 70 millivolts, right? That's a typical um, resting potential. So it's always negative. And then um, sodium channels will open up. That causes this depolarization. That's your action potential. That's the actual signal, right? For heart cells, um, that impulse will jump from gap junction to gap junction, so it's able to move through all of the cells that way. And then um, the potassium channels open in response to that hyperpolar or that um, depolarization. Potassium channels open up, potassium rushes in, causes a hyperpolarization before the sodium potassium pump returns it to normal. So just a review of the action potential. So we can read um, the impulses of the heart because they can be detected on the body's surface. So we use an electrocardiograph to record an electrocardiogram. So this is a electrocardiogram or ECG. So you should be able to identify uh, these different bumps, the P, the QRS, and the T. So you can see the P, this is where there's the depolarization of the atria because that's where contraction is going to begin, right? So depolarization of the atria causing atrial contraction. And then our QRS phase is the depolarization of the ventricles, which causes the ventricular contraction. And then jumping over here to the T, that's the repolarization of the ventricles, resetting it so that it's ready to receive another signal. So as long as your nodes are working right, everything should be good. Um, if you have some sort of injury that interferes with the nodal system, it could cause um, a racing heart, which is tachycardia. It could cause a very slow heart, which is um, bradycardia. Or if it's in the AV node, so the two can't coordinate, it could cause um, fibrillation. So it's just very chaotic. Okay, so it's time for you to review. It's time for you to make sense of information on your own. You should be able to trace the pathway of the action potential through the heart. So that's just the sequencing itself, right? Saying that it goes from the SA node to the AV node to the bundle to the branches, the Purkinje fibers. You should be able to locate each of those structures within the heart. So draw it out, make a sequence. Pathways, flow charts are very helpful in learning sequences. You should be able to draw and label a typical ECG electrocardiogram. Remember we had our P, our atrial contraction, our QRS, our ventricular contraction, and our T, um, which is our relaxation phase. So you should be able to draw that, label it, and identify what each of those peaks mean. So that's all I have for you today. I hope that was helpful. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.